Hello everyone. So this is GS Mains Paper Three, September 2017, Part Four. Okay, so we have covered up until 19 topic, right? And this is the 28 topic. That is GDP growth and four inches. It will come again and again and again. But the thing is, we have to study, right? We have to keep our keep a track of all the things which is happening, right? Fine. So what is the issue? You can keep it in, in uh, topic on Indian economy as well as topic on investment because we will keep on talking about private investment and we'll talk about four engines also. What are the four engines of what are the four engines which is powering our economy, right? So what are those four four engines? <clears throat> we have talked about it. We'll talk about it again. So those four engines are first is export, second is government investment, third is private consumption, and fourth is private investment. And there is no order as such. You can keep it in any order you want to keep it. Fine. So let's start this particular topic. So GDP growth has lost momentum in each quarter since the one ending March 2016. So from that period on onwards, GDP growth growth has lost track. So it's not like after demonetization only GDP growth has grown, means gone down, right? This demonetization happened in November 2016, right? And, but the GDP growth is losing momentum since from March 2016 only. And we have talked about what are the four engines which are powering our economy: export, government investment, private consumption, and private investment. Do remember it and do try to mention it in your copy. All these four growth engines are stalling or slacking. That is the current scenario, right? They are not performing as expected. Now, without private investment, and again, we'll talk about why. Right now, the growth which is happening, we still have a positive growth rate. It's not like we are in negative, right? 5.7 percent the is plus, right? It is not minus. But what kind of a growth it is? It is a consumption-led growth, right? We are consuming products, that's why this growth is being witnessed. But this consumption-led growth is not a solution, and we will try to understand why. Now, the thing is, without private investment, new jobs are not getting created, and without new jobs, consumption will only grow up to a point, right? If you don't have a job, then what will you do? You cannot keep on consuming things, right? Because you need a resource to sustain yourself, right? So that's why consumption-led growth cannot go beyond a point. So that's why investment-led growth is needed. Now, why investments are on hold? Why private voting say private investments are not being done, and why they are not taking risk, right? Because return risk projections of projects are not favorable. What is the term? Return risk projection, and companies are not convinced that new factories will be sufficiently profitable. So that's why they are not voting say investing much, and that's why we are not witnessing a investment led growth, right? The current scenario is a consumption led growth, growth predominantly. Fine. Now let's talk about the next topic. Now this, see, whenever you read Hindu, na in Hindu there are different books. Like on, on weekends, they give a review of different books, even sometimes on weekdays. And to give a, what is it? What is it? To take a cursory look at it, because you will realize that certain points are very important. Similarly, here, Bimal uh, Jalan, Bimal Jalan, he is former RBI governor, right? He has written a book which is called India Priorities for Future. Right, so you can keep it in topic one economy and budgeting also. Why budgeting? We'll talk about it. See what he has said is former RBI governor Bimal Jalan in his latest book India Priorities for Future has argued that Parliament has lost its power and is being led by ruling government and that even budgets are passed without debate. So what is happening? It is actually Parliament was there for uh, what do you say? For keeping a check on government's working, right? But if Parliament is not functioning under means is not performing as Expected of them, right? Then what will happen? The sovereignty of independent institutions like RBI will also be under putting say examination, right? It will also lose its independent character because government will be in Hindi. There is a term called survey sarva, right? So government will be only potent in that scenario. So parliament has to keep a check on itself. And Bimal Jana is saying that parliament is not doing that. And where he has said it in his latest book, which is India Priorities for Future. Fine. So that's why we have kept it in budgeting also. You can keep it in budgeting also because if any question related to budgeting comes, you can give a reference to Bimal Jalan's latest book, latest book, and what he has said. Fine. Okay. Now, very important topics. I will be in taking three more topics in this particular video, and these three topics are very, 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 very important, right? Now, let's talk about it. So, hydroponics and its relevance. Now, we have I uh, have kept it in topic four: farming patterns, crop top, uh, cropping patterns, and everything. So let's talk about hydroponics. What is it? Why Israel is so successful in hydroponics and all those things? So hydroponics is in, is an agricultural system that utilizes nutrient laden water rather than soil. So crops are grown in water which has nutrients rather than soil. Now there are two types of hydroponics. One is passive hydroponics and other is active hydroponics. Again, we don't need to do PhD on it. Just understand. Just remember these two types of hydroponics and which is more efficient. Active hydroponics is more efficient. Now let's talk about the advantages of hydroponics, disadvantages of hydroponics, and we'll also try to understand what is the way forward, whether hydroponics has any future or not, right? 
So what are the advantages? There are four main advantages. Similarly, there are four main disadvantages also. But you will see advantages will supersede disadvantages. So what are the advantages? First advantage is crops can be grown in stories, right? So there are, what do you say? Uh, vertical stories, right? So crops can be grown in stories in order to maximize vertical space and minimize land occupation. Hence, more number of plants in smaller area. So there are vertical stories. So in a single one square meter of area, let's suppose the land is one square meter and that only since you are building one story above another in a vertical scenario so you can grow a maximum amount of crop without using too much of a land right so it will minimize land occupation and hence more number of plants in smaller area can be grown so this is the first advantage second advantage is it will ensure continu continuous cultivation and even off season production as possible right second advantage third advantage will reduce soil degradation will reduce nutrient runoff that is algal bloom etc and it can help preserve biodiversity and combat climate change right everything will be done in a regulated manner right and what is the fourth advantage there will be no soil born disease and nematode infestation so all these things will be curtailed but then again there are disadvantages also so what are the disadvantages first thing first it is very costly second thing it the, more supervision will be required right so you will you will need to see what is happening there right what is happening in those vertical chambers and third in disadvantages it will be affected by power outages right and fourth is waterborne disease will spread quickly now you are removing soil but you are what do you say? Increasing water, right? So there is a case of waterborne disease there, right? But again, it has a future. Why? Because with increasing population and decreasing fertile agricultural land and water available for cultivation, hydroponics is the solution to produce more crops in a limited land. So that's why hydroponics is indeed the future, just like artificial intelligence. Fine. <clears throat> we'll talk more about artificial intelligence and science and tech, but that is the thing. It has indeed a future, right? Okay, let's talk about the next topic. Again, one of the most important topics because this single topic is covering almost 90% of topic 7 of GS paper 3 which is land reforms in India. So after you have done this topic from here, what you can do is you can understand the whole scenario. What is tenancy reform? What is the need for tenancy reforms? What are the roadblocks to tenancy reforms? And what are the expected benefits? And then this whole land reform topic, particular to land reform topic will be covered. So let's talk about it. So what is tenancy reform? What is the aim of tenancy reform? So te tenancy reform is aimed at redistributing ownership over the land holding from the viewpoint of social justice and reorganizing operational hold holdings from the viewpoint of optimum utilization of land. See, <clears throat> it's not like poorers will be getting land. That is the only objective of tenancy reforms. Tenancy reforms is about it's as much about social justice as it is about economic justice. So they also want to increase utilization of land. Right now you have so small land holdings that nobody is growing anything on it and that land is getting wasted, right? So that wasted has to be reduced. That is also the aim of tenancy reforms. Fine. What are the need for tenancy reforms? So there are four major need for tenancy reforms. And what are the roadblocks? So again, there will be three major roadblocks and again, three major benefits. So let's talk about it. So what are the need for tenancy reform? First is, first need is significant tracts of land remain barren and uncultivated even or after fragmentation of land among nuclear families. So there is a, what do you say, in India or even in only the developed countries, nuclear families are growing, right? So what is happening? They are dividing their lands and then lands are so small, not in developed countries, in our country, lands are so small that nobody is growing anything there. So these lands remain barren. So that is that necessitates the need for tenancy reforms. What is the second need or what is the second factor which necessitates need for tenancy reforms? To give legal status to tenancy. So land leasing option faces legal difficulties as most states either ban tenancy or permit it strictly in circum uh, certain circumstances. So what happens? Because of this, nobody is voting. They're ready to lease their land because they feel that they will lose their land. So that's why there's a very voting need to give a legal status to tenancy. Now, again, because of this, this what do you say? Land leasing option faces difficulty, uh, legal difficulty in most states because they have binding, banning tenancy or permitted strictly under circumstances, certain circumstances. So because of this, it has become a hindrance in progressive revenue models like that of contract farming. So contract farming is not getting or what is not is, is not is not successful because tenancy reforms are not at place, right? So that's why contract farming is also suffering. So this was the second need. What is the third need? Third need is to encourage owners to take up non-farm jobs as they are hesitant now as they may lose ownership over land if leased out. So suppose I am a landholder, right? I'm a landowner. Now I'm if I'm good in teaching, so I should be doing teaching, right? Fine. Why will I be going to my land and I'll be doing agriculture, right? So so that's that is the need. That 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 is the main thing of you know, tenancy reforms. If I have a land, just give it to somebody who wants to work on it and don't fear about whether you will lose the land or whether I will lose the land or not, right? Then I can concentrate on my teaching thing. 
so that is the third need for tenancy reforms to encourage land owners to take up non farm jobs fine and what is the fourth need to, to to encourage owners who are unable to cultivate to lease land to land banks so that is the fourth need fine but there are certain roadblocks also so what are those roadblocks so the first roadblock is there is lack of digitized data and land holdings records with government if government does not have any record how will they go about this tenancy reform right so that is the main issue if government does not have proper data regarding land holdings second roadblock is complexity of land laws and conflicts between center and state implementing agencies every state has their own tenancy laws and land laws right so that is the issue third is there are lots and lots of pending cases in courts at all the levels right and the fourth is political will is lacking nobody wants to touch this particular area holy cow fine now what are the expected benefits after tenancy reforms again okay, three major benefits first is it will protect property rights it will bring more land under cultivation and encourage investment so that is the first second benefit is greater sense of security to owner who wants to lease out land and permit greater certainty of tenure to tenant so all these things will be happening it will uh, ensure a sense of security among owners it will ensure a sense of certainty among tenant and third benefit is it will open doors for consolidation of operational land holdings so similarly in that regard only niti ayog has brought a land mode of model land leasing act so there is a need to consider that model land leasing act of niti ayog right fine Okay. Now let's move on to the next topic, which is horticulture sector, right? So you can keep it in topic form, farming patterns, and topic six, food processing, because horticulture will involve processing at certain points of time. Fine. Now what is horticulture? So horticulture is cultivation of plants, and we generally include fruits and vegetables in it. Now what has happened? Production of horticulture is now larger than food grains, right? And it it has surged by nearly seventy percent in the last decade, right? Fine. Now. we will try to understand how it can help us in doubling farm income right because our honorable pm has a aim of doubling farm income by 2022 so we'll see how this horticulture can help us in doubling farm income again we'll also try to look at the challenges what are the challenges and then what are the government initiatives to promote horticulture okay so how it can double farm income what are the how so there are four major things or four major ways by which it can double farm income first thing is these are short duration crops and it can it can be grown in small plots of land hence small farmers prefer to grow them right so remember in the previous topic we have talked about small land holdings so there they cannot grow crops right like rice and wheat but there they can grow these horticulture crops so that is the benefit second uh, way by which it can ensure double uh, what is it ensure greater farm income is it will ensure a quicker cash flow unlike say pulses which may take more than 6 months from showing to marketing right so it is a short season crop it, it grows very quickly right so it will provide a quicker cash flow to farmers third way is it will it, it has a more demand due to growing urbanization and changing consumption pattern as well as lifestyle lifestyle pattern so so the demand for these fruits and vegetables have increased dramatically and fourth is it is highly labor intensive so again remember in india because population is increasing at such a high pace that we need yeah we need capital intensive jobs but more than that we need labor intensive job because we have to involve laborers at certain jobs or the other right so horticulture is providing you that particular opportunity now what are the challenges again there are four, four major challenges first is this lack of market support right market is still not developed forward and backward lag linkages are still missing second is there is mass destruction due to improper improper post harvest and post harvest handling like cold storage and want of processing facilities so all these things are not developed so that is also the thing sec first was lack of market support second is mass destruction third challenge is absence of irrigation infrastructure and research in horticulture crops for higher shelf life remember uh, in the previous video i have talked about a varun gandhi article where he, he has said that india should not suffer from farmer distress or farming distress because we have second largest arable land in the world but what is happening only 35 or 30 30 or percent of that land is under irrigation so that is the issue with horticulture sector also what is the fourth challenge poor enactment of apmc acts in states that is agriculture produce marketing act now what are the initiatives by government so first initiative is centrally sponsored mission for integrated development of horticulture midh mission for integrated development of horticulture right now there are certain schemes which are centrally sponsored and there are certain schemes which are central sector schemes right we will try to understand the difference between centrally sponsored and central sector schemes also but right now just remember this this is a centrally sponsored scheme midh and second initiative is meis that is merchandise exposed for in the scheme in this uh, i think merchandise exposed for indian scheme right right so that is the whole form just uh, keep on the lookout for it do uh, try try to check it but i think it is merchandise exposed of indian scheme right yeah it should be like that only so meis is another initiative and what is the third initiative 
APMCs are reformed in many states in line with model APMC Act. So all these things are being done and all these initiatives have been taken by it means the government, right? Fine. Now again, apart from that, government has also extended GI tax to various horticulture crops, especially from northeast region. So all these things are being done. It's not like government is sitting idle. Government is still doing something and all these things are being initiated by government. Fine. So we'll keep until here only. So again, there are again certain topics which are left and I will try to cover them as soon as I can. But whatever I have covered up until now, do revise it. It will definitely help you. And yeah, fine. Thank you.